All right, here's our gradient tool. Um, sometimes you, if you've recently used the paint bucket tool, uh, that'll pop up instead, but the paint bucket tool and gradient tool are together for some reason. You'll want a new layer for this. You don't want to work directly on an image. Um, and then up here, there are some defaults. It'll always show up here what your last one was, but here are some basic ones for you to go through. And we can choose some obnoxious ones. Um, the other one is there's some basic ones that are nice to have, and that's something like this one. So uh, double click on it, bring it up, and you, again, here's your options that you can choose from. And then for this particular one, there's lots of things that you can do to change something. Right now, this is tra the the little checkerboard pattern is is transparent, so basically it'll go from red to nothing. So if you want just a little bit of an overlay, that's kind of nice. You can add as many transitions or take away all the transitions if you want to. The transitions basically change the speed of the gradient. How um, you know if you want it to go farther, if you want it to go you know more gentle. There's all these different things to consider. And then here, if you click on it, is your color. So if you didn't want red, but you wanted a green or something, you could choose there. So you can start with the basic one and modify it. And then you can name it whatever you want. You can, uh, let's just say, apple fade. And, and that's that, we'll just leave it there. I'm gonna say okay, that pops up up here. And then on my layer, there's a couple different ways to do this. Right now, this is on just a regular gradient, linear gradient. So I can either go up and down, and I'm holding my shift key down so I get a perfect line, by the way. And you can overlay it that way. If I go from bottom to top, I'll get it that way, etc. from side to side. And the, I can start out farther than my image. And you can, you know, it basically, this fade will start differently. Like here, I'll start with a concentrated, so if I don't want to have to come up here and modify everything constantly, I could actually just change how quick and how, how fast or how dramatic this is um, by moving past the borders. There's different types of gradients though. There's a radial gradient. So I don't think there's anything too surprising there. Um, yeah, so that one starts off. This one is diamond shape not use that one yet. This one just gives a kind of a, a mirrored effect that goes on both sides of your line. Oops, I de deleted my layer. So it's essentially a line gradient. I'm trying to think of what they call that up there. A reflected gradient, okay, so mirrored, same idea. And then finally the diamond gradient which is what you would expect, right? So I typically more or less only use the linear gradients, but of course they're always always there to help you. Now, one thing about this is that they, for me, they go hand in hand with our blending modes. So for example, I like this, but it's a little too much. I can always, of course, change the opacity, but I can also change how it responds to my image. And this we'll get more into, but you can see how it changes, right? So there's, a lot of different ways to utilize gradients, not just the obvious way. Your blending modes will make a dramatic difference, and sometimes it's awesome and sometimes it's not, um, but <laughs> it certainly pays to try them out. Uh, and then one, I'm gonna do a more complicated one just so you get a different feel. For this one, instead, let's go do a multicolored one. Click up there to select it. If I want a different color, I can click on it, choose it. Let's see, I'm gonna just do something horrible like yellow. There you go. So complete rainbow. Um, and then again, you can change the position of it. In this case, it makes sense if you've got three colors that the yellow would go smack dab in the middle, but you can change, again, the speed. Like if you need more, you get the idea. You can change how fast that gradient or the merging happens. And then again, you can just make a new layer. You can, you know, you can do multiple gradients on top of each other. You're not stuck with just the one. And again, how you choose your blending mode can make such a such a drastic difference. It's, it's almost unbelievable. So in this case, um, 
take this one off, but yeah, it's a way to inject some color and it can also be subtle, right? You don't have to have it full blast. And you can decide if you like that look a little bit better. Uh, so that's that. I use it quite often, but not in the most obvious way.